Hi, this is John Nurse. This video is the first in a short series that explains how to use the Bruce Trail Hike Planning Database Proof of Concept application. The database was developed to aid hike planning in conjunction with the Bruce Trail reference maps and trail guides. It was started because of my desire to complete an end-to-end -end of the trail using the blue and white trails. Okay, so let's get started. Here we see the main menu. This session will explain the create and new route or hike and the view a route or hike uh, selections. The difference between route and hike is that a hike must start on a recognized parking point and a route does not. Okay, select the uh, create a new route or hike radio button and then click uh, the proceed button. This is the route building main menu. The first thing you need to do is to select a club to start your hike from. Click the drop down and select a club. For this demo, you should have uh, map 11 and 12 reference guide 26 open to see the Toronto section hike we're planning. For this demo, we will leave the default option a hike and enter a meaningful name in the text box. Next, we can add a description of the route where we are taking. This can be any notes about the hike you wish to record. Once this is done, click the create a new route button and this will bring up the new main route building screen. We need to select a starting point from the drop down list of the parking points in the club where we're starting. For this demo, we have chosen the parking lot at the start of the Philip Gosling side trail. Now, click the create the new route input starting record button. This will create a starting point for the hike. Now that we have the first waypoint selected, we need to select the first segment of the trail we wish to go on. You notice that there are the total distance and statistics are all zero since we have not started the virtual hike until we select a segment. For this demo, we will observe the statistics, but they will not be explained until a later demo. With the side trail we have chosen here, there's only one segment, so click the Add Segment. Now you can see the segment has been added to the first waypoint, and the second waypoint has been automatically added as well. Also, the distance and statistics are being calculated on the fly. Now we need to add the next segment. At this point, we'll have the choice of returning back to where we came or taking the first Toronto segment or the second Toronto segment from the drop-down list. Note, main trail segments are named in sequence from Queenston to Tobermory, starting with the initial or initials of the club therein. In this case, T for Toronto. So we'll select the T002 to continue our hike. The statistics are accumulated and the white segment is added. Once again, the next waypoint is automatically added. This process continues as we walk through the virtual hike. We have now proceeded 14.383 kilometers along the trail. And the statistics for our hike have been accumulated. Time to start looking for an end parking spot. Notice it says that our last waypoint does not have parking. So let's scroll down to the bottom of the plan and see where we are. Uh, we've been on the Hilton Falls side trail, the Van Der Leek side trail, and are now on the 17th side road access trail. Okay, we need to go further to find a parking point that's acceptable. Here we see we have now found a, an acceptable parking point, uh, parking on the road at the last waypoint. So now let's scroll down to the bottom of the uh, screen and see where we are. Okay, this hike uh, was the first in the series of the Toronto section that we wanted to make between 15 and 20 kilometers long. So we kept going until we found a parking spot at the 17.276 kilometer. This is the end of the Speyside South Side Trail. Also notice that it's also at the marker that's 11.9, uh, which is the Toronto marker that you can see on the map. To finish the hike, let's click the Finish Building Route link at the bottom of the page. This will take us back to the main menu. Okay, now it's time to display our route to be able to print a sheet that we can take on the trail. Click the View Route or Hike radio button then click the click to proceed button. Here's the default menu. First, click the drop down list to select the hike that we want to display. In our case, it's the Toronto blue and white uh, number two hike. Finding our hike is why we needed to name the hike in a meaningful way. You see that the default selections in the menu are created sequence and summary statistics. On the trail, I prefer to have at least the latitude and longitude of each waypoint. This helps if you have a GPS and get confused about the direction you're going. We've all done that at one time or another. So I've selected the latitude and longitude. Now click the display the route button. Here we see a simple report for the hike. It has all waypoints and segments, the length of each segment, a cumulative distance at each waypoint, 
you can print this to take on the trail. I use Firefox browser that allows me to shrink the print to a small map size. At this point, hit the back button on your browser to go back to the previous menu. Are we there yet? Is this the question that's often asked in the form of how far is left to go? If we print a reverse of the hike route, we can easily answer this. So click the reverse sequence radio button and then display the route button to see this. Now the route has been reversed and the end point of the hike is at the beginning and the distance is accumulating from the end to start of the hike. Also the statistics have been reversed. So this is the complete data that you can use to go on a hike and take it with you and have with you. Also note that you've got markers and nodes. What's different about the two of those is the markers are what you see on the map, the nodes are what have been calculated. This is the end of the demo. We did a virtual walkthrough of the hike and reported it in a way that can be used on the trail. The next in the series will explain the calculation of the statistics and how they can be used to add a quantitative element to evaluating the difficulty of a hike. Further demos will explain editing and cloning of a hike, how closed segments and obsolete segments are handled, and finally how to delete a hike. I hope that this video has given you an idea of the power of this proof of concept application. Thank you for your attention.